welcome back. Uh, in the last video lecture, we have seen how to apply Gauss law for determining the electrostatic fields or electro flux densities. In this video lecture, we will uh, do one more problem on how to determine the electrostatic fields due to a shell type of distribution, charge distribution. So, in the last video class, we have seen two problems where uh, we have gone through an infinite line of charge and also a sheet of charge a one dimensional charge distribution and a two dimensional charge distribution now we will see a different type of problem where we will apply Gauss law for determining the electrostatic fields so <clears throat> as already been said the Gauss law states that the normal component of the normal component of the electric flux density vector over a closed surface and the surface integral of it is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface or in other words this is the equation of Gauss law and uh, as already mentioned this is also the Maxwell's first equation of electrostatic fields Try to remember this one. This is also employed in our uh, panel unit. Maxwell's first equation. Now, we will move on to problem number one for today, where uh, there is a single problem here. Determine the variation of field from point to point due to. Yeah. Yeah. Determine the variation of the field from point to point. due to a single spherical shell a single spherical shell of charge with radius r1 and two concentric spherical shells of charge of radii r1 and r2 and finally spherical volume distribution of charge of radius r1 see the first one is a single sphere so a sphere is there of charge r1 so what is the electric field if the field uh, of from point to point. So if I vary the point from here to here, initially here, 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 what is the electric field when it is when the point is lying inside the sphere and outside the sphere, if it is on the surface of the sphere. And the second equation is two concentric sphere shells. So how will be the field if I vary the point from here to here to here to here to here to here to here, to here, to here like this for different locations of t and the last one is a spherical volume distribution where if it is a shell basically it is just like a hollow cylinder or a hollow sphere where the charge will be only on its surface so inside there won't be any charge but whereas if it is a spherical volume distribution of charge which means that the entire region also will be having charge so in that case how will be the electric field at different points from varying from the center so for all these different cases, we will try to determine the electrostatic field intensity as a function of uh, R. Now, the first part where we do, where we are considering a single uh, spherical shell of charge, spherical shell of charge with radius R1. Now let us suppose there is a single spherical charge and its radius is R1. Okay, so given shape is a spherical shell assuming that the total charge of the shell is Q and is distributed uniformly over it which means over the surface. So which means that charge is there only on the surface of the sphere. Internally there is no charge. It is like this. It is not a two-dimensional one. It is a three-dimensional one, right? It is just like a tennis ball where only the surface is there. Inside nothing is there. Just only it is there. Okay. So let the radius of the shell be R1. So, since the charge is lying on the surface of the shell, internal charge is zero and hence the electric field inside the spherical shell is also zero which is nothing but Gauss law because if I consider any point here, so electric field is always equal, the normal component of electric field is always equal to the charge enclosed. When there is no charge enclosed, there is no electric field. So, since uh, this spherical shell is hollow, there is no charge inside it, only the charge is on the surface. So inside there won't be electric field because there is no charge inside. So electric field appears only on the outside of the spherical shell. So that we will try in detail. So first of all, let us start uh, 
uh, with the spherical shell this is entire radius is r1 now i'll take uh, three regions now one region is uh, this is the surface is filled with the surface is filled with charge so now i do have three options one either inside any point inside the spherical shell this is inside this is on the spherical shell and this is outside the spherical shell right so any point a point can lie from the let us suppose if i consider this point p1 it is at a distance of r where r is less than r if i consider this point q where r is equal to r1 if i consider this point yes this point is r is greater than r1 so three different points one is inside the spherical shell outside the spherical shell and on the spherical shell so we will try to apply gauss law for each of these each of these regions okay for the first region now where uh, for all r is less than r1 which means i am considering the sphere and uh, this is a spherical charge and i am considering only the point which is inside this one so if i consider this particular one if i consider this particular one which means internally there is no charge here Sur charge is only on the surface when there is no charge here in this area when there is no charge here which means that there is no electric field that is what is gauss law right so since no charge lies inside the spherical shell q is zero which means this gauss law whatever you mean is equal to q by epsilon which is equal to zero because charge is zero so this equation also becomes zero if this equation becomes zero which means that e bar is zero now determine the variation of field from point to point sorry for all r is equal to r1 so now i am going to consider r is equal to r1 which means i am going to consider on the surface of so all the points which are on the surface so if i consider any point here q which is on the surface where r is equal to r1 so which means that at this point the surface charge below this one is the q itself the entire charge which is there on the sphere is now here right so what i can write the electric field is very simple so whatever the charge which i'll be getting here it is just like uh, right e dot dgs is equal to q by epsilon right so what is the entire surface area of this charge it is lateral surface area so this closed integral s is equal to 4 pi the point is at r1 right so 4 pi r1 square by q so this equation now if i try to solve this one what i'll be getting e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon r1 square into q so this is what i have written here so the direction of the electric field will be radial will be coming out of the surface right right now for all great r is greater than r1 the field is again the same because whatever the charge on the shell is q so the same way this is a shell so if i consider any point uh, s here where r is greater than r1 so this is r this is r1 so if i consider so it's this is the region which i'm considering right so charge is like this so if i consider this entire region so all the electric field will be moving in this fashion angle, right so what is the entire surface area now of this which i am considering now so this is q right so what is the surface area which i am going to consider i am going to consider this entire sphere with radius cap smaller right this is e into 4 pi r square is equal to this is charge right what is the charge in this entire sphere it is equal to the q itself by epsilon so e is equal to again q by 4 pi epsilon r square into unit vector so this is the expression and the direction will be radial itself so now in the three regions now inside the sphere so this see here this is the 
shell up to this region there is the field is zero this is r is less than r1 up to this region this is maximum its value is 4 by 4 by epsilon naught r1 square right and if i go on moving outside then automatically what happens r value increases instead of r1 what i will be getting i will be getting r square right if this value goes on increasing then this value will be decreasing and if i go to infinity so what is my q by 4 pi epsilon infinity so it will become zero so that's why the electric field will be decreasing in this fashion so initially zero till the surface at the surface it is maximum and again it is decreasing to the minimum level and it may reach to zero at infinity this is the first case due to a single spherical shell of charge with radius r now we will move on to the second case part b where i do have two concentric spherical shells of charge of radii r1 and r2 which means that i do have two charges this is first charge this is second charge right so if there is a point here this a this is b this is c this is d and this is e so five different regions a means r is less than r1 this is r1 radius of inner cylinder radius of outer cylinder is r2 and the second region r is equal to r1 point is lying on inner cylinder c r is between r1 and r2 next is d where r is equal to r2 next is e where r is greater than r2 five different regions of concentration we should consider so assuming that the total charge on the inner shell and the outer shell be q1 and q2 with the radiuses r1 and r2 and the charges are distributed uniformly over their surface area so these are the different regions r is less than r1 equal to r1 between the two shells on the outer shell and outside the outer shell so the first one so here there is a charge of q1 here there is a charge of q2 right so now if i consider this point so will there be any charge there no because the minimum charge sorry the charge is here and the charge is here so if i consider a point here will there be any charge enclosed by this surface no it won't be enclosed so that's why for all r is less than r1 this region the electric field will be zero because there is no charge enclosed in that region okay so this is what we have done in the last case also now if i go to the surface if i go to the surface of this one if i go to the surface then automatically what happens there is a charge of q right now this is the inner cylinder so i'll take it as q1 so what will be the field now e bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1 square u r this is all what we have done so for the outer region if i consider anywhere here let us suppose so this is also what we have done instead of capital r1 i'll get smaller so this is the radius of the sphere which i'm considering okay so this is so these three equations we have already done here now the fourth one is what happens if the point is lying on the outer shell there is one more shell over this inner one now for that one it is new for us see when i am considering this particular point on d where it is on the outer shell so how much charge is being enclosed here this is one charge q2 and this is another charge q1 so total charge now becomes q1 plus q2 so that's why there is a change in the equation 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 plus q2 and the distance of this point from the center is r right this is r2 square if i go anything beyond this one right so distance is r the total charge enclosed by this region is this is q1 this is q2 so q1 plus q2 by r square so now how these fields will be see from here to inner shell the field will be zero so on this surface the field will be maximum and if we go beyond this it will be decreasing again if i reach this point again it will be maximum because here i'll be getting q1 plus q2 
an addition of charges there. Even though this value is decreasing, R2 is greater than R1, right? So even though this value makes it to decrease, but since it is an addition of charge, it will be again peak, again it will be decreasing. So this is the representation of electric field intensity. Now we will move on to the third part where I do have a spherical volume, which means the distribution in a spherical shell is completely different from that of a normal shell which we have considered earlier. A spherical shell which we have considered in early, earlier cases will have charge only on its surface. But in the present case, spherical volume distribution indicates that the charge is present in the entire component. Earlier we have considered only that charge is there only on the surface of the thing. But here in this case, the charge is present everywhere. So in the earlier case, I have considered the charge inside the sphere is zero. But now I am supposed to consider if this is the center. If I am considering this at this point, so if I am considering a point here, so I am supposed to consider this charge because this area also is now having a charge. And what is the charge which is present in this small region? If the charge present in an entire region is capital Q, the charge present in small region will be something less than Q, but it will be having a definite proportion, right? So that we will try to deprive now. So for all, so just like earlier cases, we will consider three. Sorry, one is inside, the other one is on the top, and this is beyond R1. So the first case, the remaining two cases, no problem, because here the entire charge covered is Q itself. Here also the entire charge covered is Q itself. But inside now, we are having a peculiar combination now. So assume the charge for entire volume of sphere is Q. If rho indicates a volume charge density, so we know that Q is equal to volume charge density into volume of a sphere. So rho into 4 by 3 pi r1 q. If I consider the entire radius of the sphere. Now, at a point with distance r from origin, now let us suppose this is the sphere. This is r1. So entire charge now, I am not considering this entire r1, I am considering only small region. So this is r. So here the Q will be rho into 4 by 3 pi RQ. Now I will take the ratio of these two. So what I will get? I will get R1 Q by RQ. So what is small Q? It will be in the ratio of its radius, cubed of the radius. So even this region, now small region also, it is having a volume charge. Earlier we haven't considered it because it has been said that this is spherical charge where charge relies only on surface. But in this case, they have mentioned it has a volume distribution of charge which means inside also it is having a charge and uh, based upon this so now substituting the value of q what i am getting in earlier it was zero now in this formula what i am supposed to employ this is this is a earlier already it has r square here if i utilize this equation r2 by r square becomes r see this equation so how the field will be e is proportional to R, isn't it? As R goes on increasing, my electric field will be increasing in this fashion. Okay. Now for this, we have already done it. On the surface, it will be equal to its radius, and if you go beyond this, it will be inversely proportional to R square. These two cases we have done already. So that's why, see, because of this uniformly distributed volume distribution, up to the surface. It will be proportional to R. Here it will be maximum independent of R and again it will be decreasing inverse proportional to the R square. So here E is proportional to R, here E is proportional to 1 by R square. If it is a hollow sphere, then it will be like this. Okay. So I hope now you have understood how to apply Gauss-Kler to determine the electrostatic field for different types of charge distributions. In the next class, we will uh, discuss problems on uh, electrostatic potential. That's it from my side. Thank you. These are the